Okay, so here we go. Uh, on the bottom shelf, you can see what do I have? I have here Rebels and Red Coats. Uh, this is without rules. That was my brother's game that he gave me. Also, the Alamo I played with my brother. Um, the other games I have Anti Tam here, which is a gamer's game I'm looking forward to playing. The Guns of Gettysburg recently got that. The Three Days of Gettysburg, I've played that. Um, I like it very much. I haven't been able to play the whole scenario yet. I'm hoping that I can, now we've moved to a big apartment, I can get a bigger space here, sort of setting up some almost like trestle table type affairs. Um, the Civil War, 1863. Wellington's Victory, that's one I'd like to get to next. I haven't played it, but I played Quattro Bar, the magazine version of that sort of get into the system. The Habit of Victory, Marengo, I love this system. That box also contains Austerlitz, which is going to be the next game that I'm going to play and uh, film. Napoleon's Last Battles, Hannibal. This game is for sale or swap. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's, it's like a good game. I bought it out of historical interest, um, but it's not really my my game. As a, as a solo game, it's kind of uh, it's too fluid. I think that that would be exciting opposed um, because you don't know what your opponent's going to do, and so you're sort of reacting to his his. Is movement you can't you can't have su you can't really sort of set out a strategy and implement it, which is, I guess, partly why I like um, tactical games so much. Being mainly a solo player, because you can sort of set out a plan and implement it, and also why I like the gamers' games. Um, fighting formations. Okay, wings of war. Uh, fighting formations. Uh, that game I think takes too long to play for what it is. I was a bit disappointed for that with that. I was really looking forward to it. Days of Decision it took me ages to get around to playing that. When I really looked forward to it, when I did play it solo, it was um, not as exciting as I, as I as I'd hoped it would be. From looking at it, it was a bit uh, procedural. Though there's like many decisions to make, depending on the situation where you are, there's not actually that many sensible choices to make. Then here's a series that um, I've. I've got two copies of this because this is being sold cheap by Udo Greed Games, the publisher. Um, I really like this series. I've played bits of it. I've, one, I've got the the other parts of it, the, um, the Africa part and the um, Pacific parts, which are in, stacked in these boxes. So that could make a monster game, which would practically cover at least half of this, this small room. Um, Battle Lines, people say this is a card game, fair enough. I like it. I like it. It sort of, it sort of abstracts down the limits to strategic choices. But I think it gives a really good sense of play. An old uh, meta gaming box game. Okay, now the next shelf. I've just got this one. Um, and I just got Santa Maria Infanta. Again, that's Italy. That's um, critical hits. Uh, advanced to Bruck system. So that's kind of like the uh, counterpart to ASL stuff. Uh, I've got that. I love ASL, but uh, it's, it's, you know, one of those kind of love-frustrate relationships because it takes so long to get into. And I'm a bit of a tart with games. I like going from game to game rather than sticking with the same uh, monogamous relationship for too long. But serial, I'm serial monogamous, shall I say. I, I, anyway, um, Third Reich, I recently played a part of a game of that on Vassal. We never came to a conclusion because it took, took a long time in Vassal to resolve the uh, game terms, but that was fun. And then I got Third Reich, Rising Sun, um, the advanced versions of Third Reich. That, I played Rising Sun solo many years ago, thoroughly enjoyed it actually preferred it to Third Reich, but um, I'd like to play it again. I like the Pacific Theatre, um, but I didn't like Empire of the Sun. I found with Empire of the Sun, I had it and I, I sold it on or, or traded it, and uh, I found, I thought it was an excellent system, but 
with the card play and so forth, I just didn't know what to do. There was too many decisions for me to make. So I, I didn't enjoy it. With Rising Sun, it's a I go, you go. So, you know, it's sort of steady procedural rather than um, reactionary card, uh, reactionary uh, sort of, uh, what's the word, you know, impulses. So you can kind of, you, you take your time and ponder things a bit more. You see everything that's going on. You know what you're going to do for the next portion and you do it. And then it play moves on. Um, Origins of World War II, Tokyo Express in there, a, a, a solitaire game. Um, I've tried to get into it several times because I feel it should be a great game, but what I don't like about it is that it, um, it has realistic movement for the player of the boats, but then the movement of the Japanese player, which is the artificial intelligence um, governed player, is is somewhat randomized so um you can see where they are at the beginning of a turn say but then you cannot in any fashion judge what they might do according to what your possibilities are so you know if, if you could say turn turn easy left turn hard left or turn um or go straight ahead and reduce speed and so forth you know your options, but then you look at the, the, the Japanese and their option is, is more randomised. So I guess it's within, and it's not within the bounds of your possibility. So they don't move the same way that, that you have to move. So I found I couldn't, it just felt really unrealistic in that they, they just felt like kind of like an amorphous enemy that I couldn't put any judgment onto what they were going to do. So I couldn't really plan you know, fact of what are they likely to do and respond to that. I just had to respond to the next thing they did and then I didn't know what was going to happen after that. I had to wait to see what they moved in and respond to that. Now, um, so that's that's a look at, oh, and up there on top, Storm of Steel. I think that's a great system, quite a simple um, whole World War One operational system. Um, but again, it's a massive monster, so you need a lot of space. And right on top of that is... Uh, is La Batal, um system, uh, the premier rule set, which is available free for download on the internet, and there's two free downloaded games in there as well. That's a nice tactical system. And up there is in that box is a, is a magazine game that I, I set up a while ago uh, as like an interim, which brings me to the rest of my games. You see all these files are filled with magazine games. So I've got fancy and science fiction, over there, ancient, medieval to renaissance, America's war, colonial, post World War Two, and um, th these are, these are all the counters and stuff for those. And then there's some card games in there. I won't show everything, but that. So you can see, I got tons of magazine games because uh, my I got games on all sorts of periods and so forth of the war. So what is my criteria for buying games? You know what. What kind of games do I like? Essentially, I like war games. <laughs> My main criteria is how much does it cost? Because I don't have lots of spare cash. So, um, sorry, I'm just trying to... Okay, I can't fix that there. Um, so, that, that sounds like a stupid criteria. Is it cheap? Shall I get it? Well, um... It's not the only criteria, because the other criteria is... is do I, have I heard something about the game? Have I read something about it? Is it something that I am now I'm going to find interesting? And is it definitely not a game that is going to be just not worth one's while to pick up and even tinker with? So if I understand that a game is completely useless, that you know the rules are incomplete, there's no hope of redemption, I probably won't bother. But otherwise, even if people say this game is flawed, uh, Blah blah blah. If there's something about it, it's a situation that I find interesting, or perhaps um, generally, if if it's a situation, the situation will draw me to it. I might give it a go anyway because, uh, again, that's the beauty of being a solitaire player. You don't have to satisfy anyone else. You can give up the game in the middle, and it's no great loss to either of you because uh, <laughs> you you're essentially tinkering away with something in your evening as as a hobby, not. 
trying to satisfy, uh, make sure that your your guest or your or your host was satisfied. Um, so that's the that's a sort of quick look at my collection here. Uh, like I said, I think um, uh, Austerlitz should be next because I played the, the two kind of essential learning scenarios, and um, I would like to get into these because I just got them. But I want to play Austerlitz because Austerlitz and um, Baton Rouge were um, came to me from a, a war game chain of generosity. So I, I felt I want. That's why I started the videos to kind of give something back for that kind of generosity. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so we'll see. Um, if if any of the, anybody's watching, they want to see something from here. Just uh, send me a comment. Tell me what you want to see, and I will I will get to it because uh, you know, barring just my whim, um, that would be a good reason to, to, to for me to play a game because someone else wants to play it, but wants to see it played or wants to see it reviewed, um, wants to have some kind of vicarious opportunity of uh, in, enjoying that game. Um, okay, I think that's probably all I can say about this for now. One more look at D&D International Team maps. Those would be nice to video, I expect, to show what they look like. The counters are quite nice. Um, not the Ostlitz ones, because half of those weren't there. <laughs> I had to get out to download them, photocopy them, paste them up. Um, okay, so uh, this one's particularly for you, USA Patchett. I, I hope you like that brief look at my collection. Any more questions, please just send them out, and I'll, I'll do my best to try and uh, respond. Okay, bye for now.